you're all very welcome. Um, April is Poetry Month here in Limerick, and we have two wonderful poets uh, performing this evening, John W. Sexton and Ely Cooling. Um, but before we begin the reading, um, John, John would like to announce the winners of the Desmond O'Grady International Poetry Competition, plus the Commended Poets. So without further ado, I'm going to give you John W. Sexton. Hello everyone, we had uh, a few hundred uh, poems entered this year. Uh, I thought the quality was fantastic. What I really loved about uh, the poems that came in was the diversity of registers. Um, any of us that look at the poetry journals, you would be mistaken to think sometimes that poetry is something that's only written in one register and has one shape, and usually it's a consistency of porridge. But when you look at uh, competitions where something hasn't been filtered, it, it's great to actually see that there's such a, a diverse range of approaches to poetry. Um, I, everything came in from uh, surrealist poetry to minimalist, there was nature poetry, there was spoken word poetry that actually was speaking from the page. So it, it was just great to read. It's, it's a, a responsibility though when you have to judge poetry. Um, there were, there were two winners, uh, first and second, and there was uh, then um, uh, some specially commended poems. What I'd like to say from the first off, uh, in case anyone entered uh, who's here tonight, um, all the poems that got through into that final uh, eight places, they weren't competing with weak poems. All the good poems were competing with each other, and that's what they were competing with. And at the end, I had the equivalent of a Grand Nationals race worth of poems that were racing against each other. Uh, and that's what the final eight uh, outraced. So in the finish, there was really upwards to 30 poems that I felt were of excellence beyond all the others that were sent in. That is not to say that the others uh, were without merit or were less. It's just that about 30 poems were able to, to go up uh, to the top. There are six specially commended uh, poets. I'm not going to read the names because all the winners and the shortlisted poems will be posted with my comments on the poems uh, over the weekend. Uh, before I mention the two winners, I'd just like to say that Dominic intends next year for the competition to have uh, three branches, um, a local poets, uh, national poets and international poets. And from those three branches then, the overall winners will, will be found. So there will be commendations, that's my understanding, in those uh, three categories. I think that's really important because sometimes local poets can feel that they're being pushed out uh, by outsiders, as it were. When in fact, there was no outsiders when I was reading the poetry because the poems were judged anonymously. I had no notion of uh, who, who had written these poems. Uh, the two winning poems actually are from the other side of the Atlantic. Um, one from Canada. We'll forgive the Canadian, because Cana and not because we have a Canadian in the room and I'm promoting a Canadian, but Canadians are kind of nearer to us Irish in temperament even than, than the Americans, but we do love the Americans just the same, despite their president. <laughs> <laughs> the winning poem uh, was a poem called Digitalis, and uh, the poet was uh, Tammy Armstrong. Um, 
Again, she's got four collections, two novels. I only found this out later uh, when I discovered who, who the author was. Uh, she's a Fulbright scholar. And actually, a lot of the poets that were specially commended are poets that have been doing this, like us all, for years and years and years. And second place uh, went to um, a poet called Partridge Boswell from the United States. Um, and the poem was called The New Math. And that's all I'm going to say about that. What I want to do now, though, uh, before I finish, is just read a poem by uh, a poet that is no longer with us. This poetry competition is called the Desmond O'Grady Poetry Competition. It's named after uh, the great limerick poet uh, Desmond O'Grady. Uh, I'd like to read one of his poems. When we read something written by the dead, the dead come into us and into the room again. We invoke them, we intone them. And it's very much, especially with dead writers, to keep them alive by reading them, by reading them out loud, by speaking their names so they don't get forgotten. Um, I'm going to read just one poem from a 1979 collection called uh, His Scald Crane's Nest by Desmond. It came out of the Gallery Press. This came out in 1979. It was his 14th poetry collection. I mean, this man never stopped writing. His first collection came out in 1956. And my understanding is it was privately published, which means... It possibly was self-published. A lot of poets started off that way. His second uh, collection, though, was published by, I think it was the Phoenix Press in 1961 in, uh, in London. And it's his second collection, Riley, where suddenly people were taking notice of Des O'Grady. Des O'Grady wrote his own poetry, but he also invoked dead people and living people because he translated a lot of uh, poetry. And it's our exposure to foreign poets in Ireland, a lot of that is due to Desmond O'Grady. I'm just going to read uh, one poem now. The reason I'm going to read this is because it invokes the place we're in, Limerick, Limerick City. It's called Sun. I have watched you, brazen as brass, blonde as sovereigns, upstart of beauty, who once, gallivanter, galloped, bareback, the sow squealing wild from the sty, eager grip on their earlugs. Watched you, proud as a pup, when evening light folds westward, when redhead hyacinth quilt down our hills from their distances, like old family dogs to our lazy evening hearthstones. Crackle our wood at growth and crackle. Placid, placid bank sees us together cross Thomond Bridge, the towers of King John's castle at your small boy's back as I tell you the story of drunken Thady and the bishop's lady reciting Hogan. All testimony to our horrid history. St. Munchin's, the broken treaty stone, tale of our beginnings, treachery, end right before you. On the shoulder of Shannon's walls, the older gulls stand upright on one wrinkled bandy leg while the younger wheel and dive, grey in the sun's last declining. The trees splay bare, fallen leaves compost in piles. The Norman square on square of St Mary's bell tower shoulders our westerly sky. My son, stride on where once I strode likewise. God rest you, Desmond O'Grady. Thank you.